Um, what, like, are you enjoying being up in Shetland for this past few days? Well, actually, I live here, but Glenn, who was speaking to you before, mm. he's just up visiting, so it's okay. my job to be showing him around a little okay. bit. But having said that, it's very nice for me because normally I'm just working away at my mm. desk on my own. Yeah. And this means I almost get to have a holiday to myself and yeah. I really like this school, so it's nice mm -hmm. to come back and come see you all. Mm. Yeah, it's like having a holiday, it's great. Yeah, and um, who is your childhood hero? <laughs> Ooh, a good question. Have you read any Roald Dahl books? Yeah, I've most mm. of them. <laughs> My favourite one is Danny Champion of the World. Mm. Uh, do you remember? Do you remember that book? Yeah. Do you remember Danny's dad? Mm -hmm. He's my childhood hero. I really liked him because I thought he was because they lived in a different way to everyone else, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. Can you remember any of the things they did? Um, not really. It was quite a while ago. It was mm. a kind of thought read to me when I was younger. I bet it's longer for me than it is for you. <laughs> a bit older than you. Um, I remember that he worked as a mechanic in a garage and he was very clever. And when he liked people, he'd help them out all he could. And when people weren't fair to him, he would maybe do something not so good to their car. Mm. I think there was something about like putting sugar in a petrol tank or something. Yeah. Is that right? Do you remember how he caught pheasants as well? Mm. No, I haven't really. Mm. Mm. He had different techniques, and, and they all involved raisins, because they said that he said that pheasants love raisins. Mm -hmm. So he would take a raisin and he'd stick it full of little bits of horse hair, and then the pheasant would eat it, and it would tickle its throat, and then apparently it just stop still. And then mm -hmm. you could walk in, you could pick up the pheasant, and you could steal it. Mm -hmm. uh, I just love the fact he was so clever, yeah. and he loved Danny. He was really kind. Mm -hmm. And my dad's a bit like that, actually. Yeah. Danny's dad is quite a lot like mine, so he was my hero. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And um, what would you would you rather live like? like where about would you prefer to live in Shetland, like around, or do you like where you live right now? Mm. Um, I really like where I live. Mm -hmm. At the moment, I rent the house that I live in. Um, so someone else owns it, and I can rent mm -hmm. every month. They let me stay there, and it's a very nice house to stay in. I stay in Borough. Mm -hmm. It's really beautiful. I've got lots of friends around there, so I really yeah. like it. I'd quite like to have a house that was my own because then I could plant more stuff in my garden, and I wouldn't have to yeah. ask permission to change things. Yeah. But I'd still like to quite stay in Borough. I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that would be quite fun. Yeah, I've stayed in Borough quite a bit because my yeah. cousins live there. So. Oh right. So we stay there quite a lot, and they have a caravan, so sometimes you stay in the caravan. Is that at the Bridge End? Yeah. Well, I live quite near there. Yeah, mm. that must be lovely waking up there. Yeah. So where do your cousins stay? Um, they stay in like um in the Bridge End. They stay mm. like they've got like a house when they have the top half, and then they somebody else rents out the bottom half. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Is it on East Bar or West West, I think. When you get to the War Memorial, mm -hmm, yeah. do you go right or left? Left. Oh, oh right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think I might know which house it is because there's not that many houses just yeah. at Bridge End on that mm -hmm. side. Either. Yeah. Mm. But when you were in New Zealand, how warm was it? It was quite warm. And what they told me was, it's a bit like Glenn was saying earlier, he, he, he thinks the weather's always like this now. When I went to New Zealand, everyone said, it's usually really rainy here. It rains buckets. It's really wet rain, really wet, heavy rain all the time in New Zealand. And it didn't rain once when I was there, except for 11 days. Um, it was beautiful weather. It was just a little bit warmer than this. Um, but it is still it is still an island, and I stayed in the city. It was right by the sea, so you still got that kind of sea breeze on your skin. You still felt that kind of nip in the air that you get here as well. If you had to choose between like living in New Zealand or staying up in Shetland, what would you choose? Shetland. No question. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did was what type of animals were in New Zealand. Totally amazing animals in New Zealand. The best thing about New Zealand is the birds. Um, because it's quite far from anywhere else and it's an island. 
Um, they've got species of birds that they don't have anywhere else in the world, and they're really strange birds. So I was telling another class just before break that there's one bird, and um, you know your voice boxes. You point to it. Yeah, you know what it does. It vibrates when you um, talk or sing. That's right, so that's what helps you talk or sing. There's this one bird in New Zealand that's got two voice boxes. And that means that it can imitate any other sound it likes. So you could be in the city in Wellington and you'll hear a car alarm. There's a tui imitating the car alarm. They imitate all kinds of different sounds. They have beautiful songs. They have really modern city noises that they do. They imitate people talking. And I think they're brilliant. I thought it was quite an interesting idea that someone could have, like an animal could have two voices. And sometimes I think it's a little bit what it might be like for people growing up here, that sometimes you speak one way and to other folk you speak a different way, maybe. Mm-hmm. Not everyone has that, but I've certainly had the experience of hearing a friend speak and sound quite Shetland when they speak to one person and they turn to me and they speak differently because I'm from England. So it's almost like having two voice boxes, I think. Are, do you like speaking Shetland dialects? Are, we, are, are you more comfortable speaking English? I wish I could speak Shetland dialect, but I'm not from here, so it's not a natural language for me. It's not the language I was born with. But I love hearing people talk it, and I love more than anything when people write poems in it. Because I feel that if someone grows up with a language in their house, if you have dialect, your mum and dad maybe speak dialect or whatever, that's that's the language of your heart. It's, it's like your home inside yourself and your voice. And if you write poems in it, they're going to be the truest poems you could possibly write. So I don't really have that. I have an English mum, and I have a, Can- a Canadian mum, rather, and an English dad. Um, but my Canadian mum started sounding quite like my English dad quite soon, so I really only have the same the same voice that everyone else has. Mm-hmm. When when you went down to New Zealand, then when it was very warm, then like was it a lot warmer than it could ever get here? Quite a lot warmer. Yeah, I got sunburned. And the other thing is, um, you heard about global warming. Mm-hmm. What happens with global warming? Well, like if it gets really warm, then different forms of gases and chemicals mm-hmm. are formed, and it melts ice caps in the North Pole and so forth. Do you know what it does to the ozone layer? Did you learn about the ozone layer? <laughs> what it is, is you've got the world, and then you've got the sky, but then there's a kind of a skin around the world of something called ozone, it's called the ozone layer. And those chemicals you're talking about, from cars and industry and everything else, have burnt a hole in the ozone layer. And that's, that's why we've got global warming, because that protective layer isn't complete anymore. So all the heat's coming in. All those rays are coming in and then they're bouncing around and everything's heating up inside. Mm-hmm. And the hole in the ozone layer is right above New Zealand. It's, it's like an actual hole in the sky almost, which means that the sun is much stronger in New Zealand, so you burn very, very quickly. And you have to have factor a million sunblock all over you all the time. You know, the really thick white stuff. And I went outside, I went to, to visit an island with lots of strange birds on it. And I went outside for 10 minutes at 10 o'clock in the morning and I was getting sunburned, I could feel it. So you've got to be very, very careful in New Zealand. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's kind of, it's kind of a way to experience global warming in a very intense way in New Zealand, because that's exactly where the hole is positioned. 